Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to another video. Today for you guys, I wanted to talk about the Kingdom Hearts 3 Armored Xehanort fight from the Remind DLC at the very end of the DLC. As recently, I discovered a few interesting, curious uh, details in the fight itself, although this was something that me and HMK were talking about last year in a 5th Dimension stream. Uh, I do want to talk furthermore about this and actually turn it into a video as this is something that I don't really see a lot of people talking about and could heavily connect to where the series is going moving forward with everything to do with Quadratum, Unreality, the world of fiction. In this fight there is a major curious detail that has been stuck in my head for a while and so I decided to go back to the fight and use the free cam uh, in order to sort of look at this better, get a better view of exactly what's going on. This detail that I'm talking about is uh, towards the end of the fight when Xehanort's down to about 4 bars of HP, he'll pull off a desperation move, which is summoning a moon. Now this is not Kingdom Hearts, that moon, uh, obviously the tainted Kingdom Hearts is already up in the sky uh, beaming down over the arena that you're fighting in but rather the DM consists of spawning what is a regular moon. At the end of the Kingdom Hearts 3 secret movie, we see the Master of Masters standing on top of a building looking up towards the moon, showing us that this world has a regular moon, not so much Kingdom Hearts. The Master of Masters is curiously putting his uh, hands over the moon in a heart shape, which maybe lets us know that perhaps he wants to terraform this moon into a brand new Kingdom Hearts of sorts. Now from everything we know about Quadratum so far, it seems like an alternate dimension, an alternate reality, a world that is not contained in the realms of the Kingdom Hearts realms that we know of. A place that is not made up of either light or darkness, explained by Apprentice Xehanort in Melody of Memory during Kyrie's dreams, or a world where both light and darkness cannot take any sort of control, explained by the Master of Masters at the end of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Quadratum, Unreality, seems to follow its own rule sets, but at the same time, I think it's very likely that this realm or dimension, New World, mirrors that to what we know of in the Kingdom Hearts dimension. While Unreality might not necessarily follow the exact same laws and characteristics of the Kingdom Hearts dimension per se, I am sure that there are quite a few things that are parallel between the two. So I find it very interesting that Xehanort summons forth a moon. It's something that we have never ever seen Xehanort or any of his other counterparts do before. And this attack is completely chaotic. It's not just the moon that's summoned, but a bunch of other smaller darker moons too, which cause meteorites to come raining down on the arena. The way in which Xehanort summons this DM is also something to take note of. He jumps up into the sky and says the words, Darkness fades. Key holes appear behind him, he throws a few of his gazing eye keyblades backwards and into those darker moons, causing these moons to be ruptured. Just before the Armored Xehanort fight, we do have a segment where Sora has to connect a bunch of keyholes, connecting all of the worlds and hearts back together. So what if, when looking towards Xehanort, he did a similar thing, just not in the known world, the Kingdom Hearts world? but more so the world of fiction, unreality. What if the keyholes we see those darker moons come out of are actually portals from unreality into the universe of Kingdom Hearts? The words that Xehanort says when opening up these keyholes summoning the moons is quite interesting too, mentioning darkness fades. Darkness fades! Yeah, that might align up with exactly Quadratum itself and the rules that follows of not being made up of either light or darkness. What's interesting is there are a total of 13 moons that appear in the sky, the moon being one, and then there are 12 smaller darker moons. If Quadratum is some sort of parallel dimension that for some aspects mirrors that to that of the Kingdom Hearts dimension, then what's not to say that there are also a group of 13 residing there too? I really do like this idea that Xehanort has potentially summoned the power of 13 others from a different dimension, that of the world of fiction, Quadratum. Maybe they're known as the 13 moons, as light and darkness can't be controlled in Quadratum, they're something else. But each individual 
Dirigible Moon is helping out, it's attacking Sora and Kairi with the use of meteors. Even the moon itself sends down a meteor. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, looking at this footage right here, you'll see that a meteor literally appears out of nowhere. It doesn't actually come out of one of the darker moons. What's important to note too is Xehanort is aware of Quadratum. He is literally the one that gives Kairi the hint, the end of Melody of Memory, as to where Sora might be. Even when Sora does appear to save Kairi before Xehanort slashes down on her in Melody of Memory, Xehanort mentions that Sora can't talk because from where Sora is in Quadratum, his voice can't reach into Kairi's dreams and goes on to mention that he is certain of where Sora's heart is. Xehanort is completely aware of Quadratum. We even get further confirmation at the end of Melody of Memory in the scene with the Sid explaining how Xehanort must have looked into this other world at some point. He knows a bit about it. And I am sure that within the Dark Road finale, we will likely get more information towards Xehanort's knowledge on Quadratum, and likely it is the Master of Masters who filled him in about it. It seems very likely that although Xehanort's plan did fail in Kingdom Hearts 3, part of his plan was to destroy Kairi, which would then cause the events of Sora to save Kairi's heart, but in the process of which, abusing the power of waking, causing Sora to become so damaged he ends up in a alternate world. This could be a scheme that both Xehanort as well as the Master of Masters came up with during their time together in the very early stages of Xehanort's life. Again, we might get more elaboration on this within that Dark Road finale. What's interesting too is when looking at the moon, it is completely opposite to that of the Kingdom Hearts moon that is up in the sky. Again, giving us little implications that this could potentially be a parallel dimension of sorts. And you do get a slight glimpse of inside these keyholes from where the moons are coming out of. It looks like the sky is sort of uh, during maybe like a sunset or something with dark clouds, but is still light for the most part. The skybox that's being used with inside of the keyholes seem to be completely opposite to that of the skybox that's being used in the arena. The skybox and the keyholes are these sort of darker clouds with uh, light, whereas the skybox here is clouds, lighter clouds, but with a nighttime setting. There is certainly something on the other side of those keyholes. These other darker moons that are coming out certainly have arrived from somewhere else. Another interesting detail to note here is the arena in which the fight is taking place on. It's taking place on what looks like some sort of summoning circle or an arcane table of sorts. There's a lot of glyphs and interesting details all around the place, and it's layered on multiple different circles. Now, we talked about this in a video last year, but this was talking about the arena of just the base game's Xehanort fight. This arena is different to that of the final fight at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. This one is purple, and the details are different. In the normal Xehanort fight at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, the icons all represent the different Seekers of Darkness. On top of that, the bottom circle is displaying the icons that represent the Foretellers, as well as an icon that represent the Master of Masters. So what's different about this one is all of those Seeker of Darkness icons, as well as the Foreteller icons, are not present. It contains a bunch of the different icons from the Scala language that we come across in Scala Ed's Kylum that is also present on the original Xehanort circles as well. However, the prominent detail of this Remind Arena is an eye that is emblazoned pretty much everywhere on every single circle's layer, with the bottom layer containing the biggest eye of which. It's an interesting looking eye icon as well. It's one that we've never seen throughout the Kingdom Hearts series. While the eye does have some sort of significance in the series when looking specifically towards the gazing eye, which of course we know is the Master of Masters eye, this eye is different. It looks almost Egyptian. So is it possible that maybe Quadratum has its own version of the gazing eye from its own parallel version of maybe even the Master of Masters? If my theory of Xehanort calling upon 13 other darknesses that aren't technically darknesses in the world of Quadratum to help assist in this battle against Sora and Kairi, could it then possibly mean that there is parallel versions of the Four Towers and the Master of Masters? I'd like 
like to mention too that a lot of the different symbols and icons in that original Xehanort fight represent the Seekers of Darkness, the Foretellers, the Guardians of Light. You would then assume that the same should probably apply for the different symbols and icons that appear in this different Remind arena, right? Another icon that is different and I believe we haven't seen before is this one right here. No doubt the eye likely refers to something or someone so maybe this icon does too. Is this possibly the icon to represent Izora, Or maybe a different character in Quadratum that's yet to be revealed. I managed to count seven of these on its own layer. So again, the theory on parallels. Uh, maybe there are seven guardians of light type of thing within Quadratum. Of course, this could all just be for design purposes and design purposes only, these certain different details, but it's always good to look into the cryptic side of things, especially when it comes to Kingdom Hearts. Nomura leaves certain details apparent for specific reasons. But whatever it might be, this eye is very interesting. We've never seen this detail before in Kingdom Hearts, and I think in this fight alone really confirms the fact that Xehanort certainly knows more about Quadratum than I think we know. Again, I do feel as if we will get further elaboration on Xehanort's knowledge of Quadratum in the finale of Dark Road to see more of the conversations between Xehanort and the Master of Masters, as of course we know they have quite the relationship. However guys, I would love to know what you dudes think in the comment section down below. This is something that I just don't see really many people talking about, so I thought I would bring it to your attention. However guys, I'm Cynical, hopefully you're having a fantastic day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.